Hey going all this video is about story time with me again. Everyone loves the story times with me. And the the pros and cons of being in a relationship and the ways to make it work and yes, yeah, random shit like that. So the first thing is I'm Andre everyone. I'm a successful person in life. I have everything in life I've ever wanted. I have a good job, a good income, I have everything I want in life that money can buy. I've, I've got everything in life. And for years, the last three years, since I lost the love of my life, I've been on a journey. I've been on a journey to make myself better. I've been on a journey to prove once and for all there is somebody out there for everybody. Now, I've always, you know, I never closed the door to a relationship, never would. I'm open for it, but I guess with relationships, no one's really ready after a bad breakup. No one's ready for the pain and suffering. But you can't ignore, if someone amazing comes into your life, you can't ignore that if that person makes you happy and that person is someone you could really spend a, a long period of time with, that's the sort of person you don't give up on. That's the sort of person you lock down. You handcuff, you chain. That's the sort of person you get into a relationship with. Nothing changes when you get into a relationship. If two people are scared about being in a relationship and they go into one, it will more likely be successful because they don't want to hurt each other. You know, they want it to work and they're willing to try and make it work no matter what. It doesn't matter at the end of the day what friends say, family say, police say, whatever. If two people really love each other and want to be together, they should just do it. There's no excuses. You love someone, you be with them. If you want to be with someone, you just be with them. There's no bullshit games or make up stories or bring st people involved. No. Because if you keep bringing that kind of stuff up, you'll never have a successful relationship. You'll never be happy. You'll be miserable and lonely for the rest of your life. Don't be judgmental about the person. Don't be like, oh, you know, they've got kids or, you know, that person's a bit fat or, you know, that person's got nothing. No. The most important thing you look at is if how they treat you. If they treat you amazing and they accept you for you and your baggage, then that's the person you, you end up being with. And you don't stop at nothing because at the end of the day, it will hurt you if that person just goes off to someone else when you could have been with them. I come from an experience where I just keep finding the wrong sort of people. It's happened almost all my life. I've actually only had two decent partners in my whole life. One when I was at 19 and the one from three years ago. That was my only two decent partners in life. Two that made me become the person I am today. A beautiful man, a beautiful human being. And if no one can accept that, then it's their loss. It's like I know this beautiful lady that's a single mum. Uh, she just come out of a divorce. And I look at her and I'm like, looking at her going, why hasn't a decent guy picked her up yet? Because there isn't any. There isn't many decent guys and they're definitely isn't many decent women out here you know the poor girl has had mind games played with her and i feel bad for her because she doesn't realize how bad the, the guy she liked was treating her i said to australia if a guy loves you and wants to be with you he'll just do it there's no fucking excuses love conquers a lot of boundaries and if you love someone and want to be with someone, you don't stop at nothing. You keep fighting. If you really think this guy could be the guy for you, why let him go? You know? Why? People come into our life for a reason. You know, relationship's a big word, but it doesn't have to be. Look, being single... I'm just dying to know what that sound is. 
being single is not the worst thing in life, but it's the loneliness that makes people go crazy. It's the loneliness that makes people put themselves down and question themselves because the more lonelier you are, the more likely you'll find the wrong sort of person and make the same mistakes over and over again. You see, just recently I had a girlfriend this year. It didn't last long. It was nothing, nothing I did. I know that. And it's nothing she per se did. I know that. But I find it very hard to just be happy that we're both single. That's fucking crap. People that know me know that I was always going to speak up about this subject as much as I can, but I let my guard down for a split second because I thought this person was trustworthy. I thought this person I could make her life better, and I probably can. She needs to understand that I am nothing, and she knows you could even ask the girl, I'm probably one of the best boyfriends she's ever had. I'm probably the best looking boyfriend she's ever had too. And I believe she needs help. And I believe I'm the sort of guy that can provide her and her kids with the most best life. I know that. You can ask a lot of females on my Facebook saying, you know, you're a great guy. You you deserve to have a princess. You deserve to have a queen by your side. Yeah, I do. You know, what my ex of six years taught me is I need to become a better person. And I became this better person. You know, I didn't know if I was going to make this vid tonight. Because I feel lost. I feel confused. I am drinking a lot of vodka and orange right now. I just think that you know, why say you love somebody, like someone, bring them into your world, bring them into your kid's world, just for you to just give up? I didn't put relationship status on my Facebook because I had a feeling something like this would happen. You know, she was happy to put relationship status on her Facebook, post photos, the girl I was seeing, and that was lovely. She was happy to show me off to all her friends. I didn't ask her to do it and she did it. She just did it because she knew that I was the guy for her. And for the first time in three years, I felt special. Like someone put me on a pedestal for everybody to see. And I hadn't had that for three years. And yeah, it's all gone. And you don't end, the way it ended shouldn't have been the way it ended. And I was supposed to be friends with the person and trust them. How can I trust someone waking up to a message that I got today? Now, for anyone confused as fuck, uh, yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm confused as fuck too. Because I am that sort of guy that, you know, accepts people for for themselves, you know, except ex- ex- See, when I date someone, you know, preferably I would not date someone that does drugs. Preferably it would be nice if they don't smoke either or drink, but that's not a deal breaker. Just I don't like, you know, druggies. I don't like people that smoke, but it's not a deal breaker with the smoking part. It's just I don't smoke and I, I don't like the smell. And when you kiss someone that's cigarettes, it doesn't taste nice and their breath's not that good. But when you do, when I found that one person that doesn't do drugs, doesn't smoke, I was like, sweet, finally someone decent, someone that drives, someone that's not a bum, you know, someone that can make me happy. And then you start seeing stuff that you don't like and you're like, you try to ignore it, but you're like, I can't ignore that. I know people go for a lot. Like I said in this vid, my friend that, you know, what what the guy's doing to her is ridiculous. 
and I feel bad for what she's going through. I feel bad for what my girlfriend or whatever it is right now is going through. Life's not meant to be easy. I do understand that. But when you've got two people in the same boat that have been through a lot, you can help each other through the good times and bad. You can be there for each other to pick each other up. I will do that for her. I will do that for a lot of my friends, but where are they now? You know, when I saw my mate laying in a coffin just days ago, he's only a few years younger than me. And he had a whole life with his fiance to live. He had a beautiful partner. They were planning kids apparently in marriage and he loved his woman. And when I was at his funeral the other day, and I saw the amount of people, and I heard what his mum was saying, it broke me. He had, the kid had everything. He should be here and I should be up there. He had more to offer in life than what I had. And he had a beautiful partner. You know, I look at my fu future and... When my funeral comes, there'll be nobody there. I won't have, you know, a whole room full of people celebrating my death. No, I'll have nobody. That's the reality. And I'm cool with it. I'm actually cool with it. But it made me think, you know, life's too short. We could be alive one day, dead the next. So what I'm saying is if there are people in your life that you love and cherish, whether it's your friends, your family, your partner, let them know. Honestly, you got to let them know. Make sure that they mean a lot to you. I said to my friend that she's in a hospital right now and she's laying there, probably alone. I wish I could be by her bedside. I'm probably going to see her like... If she, when I know that she's there, I'll probably go there and give her some flowers or something. I said to her, if I lost her, it would have broken my heart even more because that's one of my close friends. I don't deal with death very well. But the one thing I don't deal with is bullshit and lies. Why introduce me into your world, into your kid's world, and give me all this trust for you to just give up? I don't understand that. The key is to a successful relationship, you see your partner at their best and you see them at their worst. And if you stick by them at their worst, which I have, then I'm a keeper. And no one should tell us if we should be together or not. See, I was falling in love with this person because it's been three years since I could use that L word. You know, for the last year I was on a downward spiral I wasn't looking for a relationship but it popped up a month ago this person came into my life and I was like she's everything I look for everything I've been searching for the last 30 years of my life finally I thought I hit the cross lotto I thought I finally found someone you know look what we deal with, hang on, I just got to fill up another drink. What, it's too cold. What we do in life is our business. We take full responsibility for our actions, whether we're, you know, doing drugs and the drugs kick in and we do something stupid. Nice vodka and orange. Cheers, guys. We're drinking double smear black cans. These are equivalent to to a can. Um, I just feel really lost making this vid. Yeah, I've, I've got a lot of other vids coming that I'm editing. I've got from the vault. I've got stuff from last year that's never been on YouTube or Facebook. I'm working out how again to download three vids from from last year off my Facebook. There's some good ones there, actually. I was quite impressed with my singing on a few of them. 
And if you haven't already, check my um, reels on Facebook. They're amazing. I'm getting a lot of support, even from people at work. They're like, we've seen some of your singing vids on uh, your Facebook. I'm like, because they're public, so anybody can see them. And they're like, it's actually quite good, Andre. You can do girls' songs, you can do guys' songs, you can do sad songs. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm not a singer, but I, I think I can hold a tune. I've gotten better over the years. But the one thing my girlfriend currently, I don't even know what to call her, to be honest. I guess probably sing. I don't even know if I'm single. I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. She looked at a video from 10 years ago of my body. I have the same body as 10 years ago. But the thing is, and this is what I'm going to, I'm going to probably get myself in the shit for this next part, I say. But I have these women that say, oh, you're sexy, you're hot, you're good looking, you know. But you could put on a little bit more weight. What if I don't want to put on weight? What if I'm happy with the figure I got? What if when I was younger, I was called fatty? And it traumatized me and I never wanted to get fat. Why do you think I only eat once a day? Because I don't want to get fat. Yes, I'm underweight for my size. I do understand that. But I'd rather be this size than fat and overweight and unhealthy. You know? I have pride in my body. That's why I shave my body because I don't like hair. That's why, you know, I, I'm clean shaven head to toe. You know, I have a mohawk. I have my mohawk back. I fucking love it. Honestly, I love my mohawk. It makes me feel good. And and by the way, the lady that I'm not dating was like to me, you're fucking hot with your mohawk. And so I got that comment three times by three different women that are not in a relationship with me. Too bad one is in a relationship and the other one lives in another state, but... You take a compliment where it is, eh? <laughs> you take a compliment. But as once a lyric in um, in that song, My Way, you know, the lyric goes, And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. It's kind of like my life. The end is near, and the final curtain will come down. I don't know when it is, but it really feels like sooner rather than later lately. It's just the amount of bullshit that keeps kind of happening to me. You know, for a guy my age, I've literally got everything. I own my own house, successful job, some really lovely friends, three cars, two phones, don't ask about the car situation. I'm going to at least get one car soon. I'm just looking at cars. Nothing decent comes up. But I've got everything that I want in life, except for the new Xbox. I don't have that. I have the new PlayStation, but not the new Xbox. I have a shitload of drinks in front of me right now. I've got iced coffee. I've got Pepsi. I've got orange juice. I've got vodka. I've got a frappe from McDonald's. But the one thing I don't have is my girlfriend right here. I don't have a friend right here. How 24 hours can change. Whereas same time 24 hours ago I was with someone. I was in their arms. I was happy. What I say to people that are in relationships, make sure you're in it for the right reason. Make sure you're with the person because you generally want to be with them. If one of you wants marriage and the other one can't provide it, then it will not work. If you're dating someone with kids and they don't want any more but you do, it will not work. At the end of the day, we deserve to have what we want. If we want kids and the person we're with can't give us kids, then we move on because it's just a waste of time being with that person if you're not going to get what you want. Same goes for marriage. If you're a sort of person that wants to get married and the other person doesn't, then why drag it on? 
in life, we should be able to have what we want. You see, I, if I'm in a relationship, no sex is not everything in a relationship, but damn, if I'm in a relationship, I wouldn't mind having sex at least once a day, you know, with the right person or even like, if she wants to get a bit frisky and kinky three times a day, you know, like for me, there's no limit. I could go all day. I could have it 10 times in a day. I think my record is like six. You might have to ask my ex of six years that one. I think we did it like six times. It's a six. I remember it was a lot of times like, but, and I know the longest I've been, I was in a backseat of a car for an hour and a half, gave the girl like a couple of orgasms and she's like, you're still hard after an hour and a half. I'm like, yeah, I know. And she's like, what drugs you want? I'm like, none, baby. <laughs> so I'm pretty proud of that achievement. I, I don't know to this day how I lasted that long. At least I don't need pills to get it up. And the actual girl that I'm seeing right now, goh, just looking at her makes me get it up. It's just, you know, there's no problems there. <laughs> it's funny because uh, one of her comments, uh, one of the nights, I, I just was like, because every girl is always curious, like, because I always say, oh, it's small and all that. And I flopped it out one night to the girl and she's like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, I told you it's small. She goes, no, that's big. And I said, oh, yeah, whatever. And she's like, that will hurt. And I'm like, you damn straight it will hurt. <laughs> Little story time with Andre there just saying that. It will hurt. <laughs> It'll hurt for about 30 minutes and maybe nine months later. I don't know. I'm so glad I've not got anyone pregnant yet. I'm so glad. Because I would have fucked up my life ages ago. Even more than what it is right now. Like, I'm so, like... With all the drama that's happened over the last year and I come out successful and win. No repercussions, no anything. It, it feels great. The trauma's still there, but I'm still fighting it every day. Knowing that when I go to work, I'm appreciative of, number one, them giving me hours, but number two, they respect me. They acknowledge how good I am as a worker. And you've got to love that. You've got to love the fact that in the job that you're busting your ass for, they respect you. That's pretty cool. But what I don't respect is the way people treat me. Some people look at me as like I'm a walking ATM. I'm good for lifts. I'm good for money. No, nah. because I'll tell you something. To all you motherfuckers watching, you're not going to borrow money off me. I don't care what excuse you'll give. You're not going to get a cent off me. I'm not going to buy you shit. You're not going to borrow anything off me. And certainly I'm not going to drive you and your fucking friends or your boyfriend and you and... Yeah, fucking assholes. When I say I want to meet up with you, I don't want to meet up with you and your friends. I don't want to meet up with you and your boyfriend. I don't want to meet up with you and your girlfriends. I want to meet up with you. You know, my anxiety is shit when it comes to meeting people. And you think I want to be in a car full of people? Fuck no. I'm very sick at the moment. My girlfriend doesn't realise. My friends don't realise. My, my parents, my work colleagues don't. I'm very sick right now. I'm barely trying to get out of bed every day. And it's lately, like the last few days, I, I usually get up about 11.30 because I go to bed about 5 a.m. I can't even get out of bed before 12. Like, it's just, even the last few days, I've just been mentally drained. I haven't been eating properly. And you think I want to live this kind of lifestyle? I want to like, you know... Be able to get up and be like, hey, maybe I'll go see this friend today. Maybe I'll go hang out with my girlfriend today, you know? It really needs ice. This Smirnoff can and orange juice. The orange juice is cold, but this the Smirnoff is fucking like terribly warm. And mixing it together does not make a combo. This is going to make me shit light, I reckon. But at the end of this vid, I'll have four videos in the corners of the screen. Make sure you click on them. Make sure you watch them because there'll be videos about the real me. There'll be a relationship video there. That one saved a marriage. Very proud of that. Pats on the back. But lately, my brain 
it's just been fried over the last 24 hours. You know, everyone would probably think, oh, you're the bad guy and everything, aren't you? Not this time. There's no Joker in this one. The Joker didn't do anything this time. The Joker kid behaved himself. Normally, that's the psychotic side of me that would destroy anything. Friendships, relationships, but... This time, it was nothing I actually did wrong. You know, I'd rather be dumped for, you know, a girl. I'd rather get dumped for a good bloody reason. You know, I'd rather someone give up on me because I'm not pulling my weight, my weight in the relationship or not giving it to the person or fucking, well, like I said, I haven't had sex in a year for a reason. And you think when a relationship comes, oh, you're going to get at least something. Nope. I get told I'm sexy. I get told that I'm good looking. It's all right to kiss me, but to fuck me, yeah, it's a different story. But like I said, it's nice to know that for all this, there are some people that like, if they were single, they would be my partner. If, if they lived here, they would be my partner. There's actually a girl in another state that I've been talking to recently that can't lie. We have a lot in common, but we're in the get to know you stages. And I think if she watched more of these videos and stuff, she'd probably be like, hey, if you can't fly your ass over here, I'll fly my ass over there. You know, she probably would. MCL, MCL. And if you don't know what MCL means, guys, look it up. She'll know what that means. Whoop, whoop. But at the end of the day, you want someone. Then don't let anyone else get that person that you want. If you love someone, you tell them. Don't fucking be shy. Maybe you're not ready for a relationship, but when the opportunity presents itself and you're in one, then why just give it up within a day? You let your guard down to let that person into your heart, into your life. You've told the person you love them. You told the person that they're they're a good boyfriend or girlfriend of you, and then you just drop everything for a second because of what someone told you to say. The heart w wants what the heart wants. Your heart wants me. Then fight to get me back. You want to be my friend, well then earn it. Because I tell you something, every day could be your last. And what if tomorrow you wake up and that person you hurt, or the person you loved, is not here anymore? That guilt could kill you for life. That guilt could put you off for life for everything. So don't do what you can do tomorrow. Tomorrow. Do it as soon as you can. Reassure the person, hey, I love you. Hey, we're not breaking up. Hey, I'm still your, your partner. Because if you don't reassure them, they're not going to be here the next day. Because my friend that's now, God rest his soul in heaven right now. When he was in the hospital, video chatting to his missus, and he told her, I love you. And he'll talk to her tomorrow. He didn't get to talk to her the next day. That's when he went into a coma. And then he died a few days later. That quick. But at least he got to tell the person he loved how he felt about her. Before it was too late. So I'm challenging everybody out there, whether you're in a relationship or not. If you love someone, don't wait another day. If you want to be with someone, matter if they're in another, another state, another country, you tell them. It's time we all express our hearts and open our hearts and let our walls down. Because it's better to let the person know how you feel before it's too late. So I'm going to say this.
in my life, there's only been two great loves of my life. And I've talked about them on previous vids. But I actually thought there was a third. As recent as a few days ago, I thought maybe this could be a third. I have a really good feeling it could be. But if that person can just stop playing games and realise what a good thing she has and not give up on me, then she will be that third person. But if she can't control the demons in her and the voices in her head, she's never going to have a happy life. She's going to have a very lonely life because I've been in that same boat as her. And believe me, when you're lonely, you make the worst decisions of your life. You meet the worst people of your life. Trust me, since last year, kissing 20 different girls plus is absolutely ridiculous. And the numbers just keep adding up. Girls don't have a problem kissing me. But they don't stay around and have a relationship. They use me to what they can and that's it. Trust me, I could add another two people, another two names to that list if I wanted to. Within the next week even. One that doesn't even live here in Adelaide, I could just fly over to see the beautiful girl and, and make out with her as soon as I get off the plane. There's someone here, I could do that too and add another number. And I'm sure there's a friend that in a relationship right now that would still hook up with me because I'm something special in their eyes. They want to kiss me because they find me attractive. That's great. That's fucking fantastic. A few of them find me sexy. That's fucking great at my age. I'm not fucking complaining. But if I'm good enough for that, why aren't I good enough for a relationship? I think it's your selfish minds that cloud your judgment. You'd rather have a guy that's toxic and beat you up and abuse you and is a complete fuckhead over a decent guy like me. That makes no sense. But like I said, life's too short. Time to stop being selfish in your lives and realising your selfishness hurts others and affects other people's lifestyles. You know, it's one thing for a guy to give up a lot, but what are you giving up at the end of the day? You know, you tell the guy he has to do this in the relationship, he has to do that. Yeah, but what are you doing to counteract that? What are you doing to be like, oh, if you do this for me, I'll do this for you? Because it works 50-50 in a relationship. You want the guy to do all this stuff for you, but what are you doing for the guy? Are you putting out for the guy? Are you going to take him out to dinner? Are you going to do something for him nice? Because if you're not, why is that guy with you? He's doing everything in his power to be with you and come out of his comfort zone. But you can't show that same respect back. He would do anything for you. Almost. Because there's sometimes in a relationship, you know, you need space. But you can't expect a guy to give up his lifestyle and go out of his comfort zone to please you. It works 50-50. If he's doing that for you, you know, getting out of his comfort zone, I expect the two people in a relationship, if the guy's doing everything for the girl, and if the girl's not putting out, well, then that's just fucking selfish. That is really selfish. You know, if, if you're not going to have sex with a guy or do stuff for him, well, then why is he doing all that stuff for you? Do you expect the guy to stay with you if that's the case? Most guys cheat and most females cheat because they fucking are not getting what they want in the relationship. I mean, do you expect a guy to wait a month before you first sleep with him or, or a week? It shouldn't be like that. If you're in a relationship, you know, the best way to get over the, the previous relationship is to fuck the other person silly. It, it does work. You fuck them out of your system. And it helps, a, a, a good healthy relationship is helped by good sex. Because it gets a lot of anger out. It makes you lose weight too, by the way. It gets rid of a lot of stress and anger. 
the moment you guys have sex, the only two people that exist in that in the world is you. You don't think about anything when you're having sex. You just want to fucking go for it and have a good time and enjoy it. You don't think about what's happening outside, the problems and that. Sex does solve a lot of things. It can make things complicated between friends, but then again, there's a few friends I've got that I probably wouldn't say no to. <laughs> Not going to lie there, because, yeah. And the one I'm looking at right now, bestie, mate. She's, whew, hello. But I respect she's got a partner, so. Actually, a lot of my friends got partners, but I just think, just one time, one time, you know what I'm saying? I can't believe a little thing like that makes so much noise. I don't know why it makes noise, that thing. I've got this, like, little holographic Elvis thing. It's in, like, a um, rectangular prism, and it's on, like, underneath it's, like, this thing that spins around that's got lights, so it lights up the whole thing. And that's the thing that's making noises right now. Not this uh, star thing for a change. So, actually, I'm surprised that that's not, because that thing makes a lot of noise, too. But I like this. And I've got my wallpaper going in the background. I'm not playing the music on it because it makes me cry and makes me depressed as fuck. But it's, it's, it's a nice backdrop with all the lights in here. I'm going to get some more lights for in here. But yeah, I thought I'd make this vid for my Facebook friends because they're probably wondering what the fuck is going on. If I could tell the full story, I would, guys. But yeah. I just want to say a huge thank you and to the people on Facebook, they'll know who I'm thanking because under this video will be the videos thanking people, people, one beautiful, well, two actual beautiful people posted on my Facebook something really sweet and private messaged me and I, it touched me fucking hard. Gorp, fucking touched my heart. And you ladies know who you are. One that, um, Actually, they've both just recently come to my life, but one of them um, here in Adelaide, I've, I've, I've met twice. And the last time I saw, I'm looking at the photo now, I had a really cool photo. And my girlfriend that I'm currently seeing at the time was like, who's that beautiful girl? And I'm like, a friend. And she's like, you've got a lot of beautiful friends. How come they're not single or how come they're not with you? And I'm like, they're, they've got partners and... You know, they're not going to dump their partners for me. As much as I'd like it. But if they're happy, they're happy. Anyways, I've got to go back and edit some videos um, for future videos on YouTube. Check the four corners of your screen now. Um, and you'll see a lot more into my life than what you expected. Ciao.